has the internet, the new media, the, um, the Twitter, the blogging, mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, I think this is kind of an obvious question, but has it made public relations more or less ethical, and why? Hmm. I think that it should, in the end, make... That sort of begs the question as to whether or not public relations was unethical to begin with, right. which I would say from a practice standpoint, I don't believe that to be the case. I have always believed, even before the advent of the Internet in such a big way, that you know, if you were doing some research for a company or a client, you were the PR person or the agency, and you were doing some competitive research, it would be patently wrong to call up a competitor and pretend, I'm a student you know, at X university, and I'm doing some you know, research on your company. Could you tell me about blah, blah, blah? I mean, a lot of people did that, and that's just wrong. I mean, that is not what our profession is about. I mean, what is, one is one of the page principles, the first one, <laughs> tell the truth, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're predisposed to lie or to misrepresent yourself or your company, it doesn't matter, pre or post internet, you're going to do that anyway. It's the same thing with a Sarbanes-Oxley. If you were going to, um, like Enron, you know, misrepresent and um, falsify and lie, cheat and steal, essentially, um, it, Sarbanes-Oxley is not going to necessarily prevent that. You know, that mm -hmm. behavior will continue. So I think it's a sort of a behavioral issue. What I do think has changed is that due to all of the social media tools now to us, the transparency now is so much uh, greater, um, and it's immediate. Um, you really have like no margin for error. Um, there's, you know, as we like to say, there's no place to hide. Um, so actually, that should be very liberating, and it should be very good for public relations. Um, you know, there are no more rocks that people can hide under, or if they can, not for very long. So I think um, what that has highlighted for our profession, however, is that. We have to really be incredibly vigilant about transparency issues, not just the way we practice our craft, but for our organizations, whether they're our own co companies or organizations that we work in, or whether we're agencies and work for them. I think that you know that is what has really changed. I think forever the the uh, the, the environment in which we operate in. What are the abilities and characteristics that senior staff look for when they're interviewing potential employees. I mean, it, hopefully um, 10, 15 years down the road, um, scholars, but also some students are going to be looking at this. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, okay. what are the kinds of things that they should know that they, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they need to understand? Well, I think certainly there's the technical part of our craft that, you know, changes. I mean, 20, 25 years ago, media pitching, for example, was an important skill. It isn't to say that that skill is not important in, in its current configuration today and probably will have, look different again in 20, 25 years. Um, writing, I think, has always been, I can't imagine, won't continue to be important to us as in a profession. How you present yourself, how you present your ideas, um, those, are, those are important skill sets for our profession. I think there are others that are emerging, perhaps they should have been as important 25 years ago, but I think that the skills for success in our profession are the ability to sort of see around the corners. You know, we've been known as doers, you know, we're the writers of the, of the press materials or the statements, the messaging people. You know, what we need to understand now in a much more integrated world uh, much more complex world. You know, all the drivers that we have, the three main drivers that, you know, the Page Society has identified between globalization, uh, stakeholder empowerment, and the, 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 the new media or the, um, you know, I like to think of it as social networking on steroids with the new media. <laughs> but, you know, those trends have really created a much more complicated environment for us. And the potential of public relations in that, I think, is huge. It's a great opportunity for us, but we have to really step up our game pr as professionals. You know, we can't just go in the corner and write our thing or send emails out or, you know, write, write the web page or whatever the current state is of the communication side. You know, we have to be leaders. We have to help 
motivate our companies. We have to participate as leaders, you know, be in, earn our place, you know, as a senior leader and a, and a function that is helping drive change or helping organizations deal with change. I think the current state of change that we see now, I don't know what that, that looks like in terms of history, but you know, they, they say that change keeps accelerating with each passing year or second or whatever. Um, that's just going to continue, and I think the ability for our profession to help organizations deal with change and what that means in terms of their relationships with all the different uh, constituents that they have to deal with in order to be successful is huge. And that requires a lot of those skills of listening, of being calm, of, uh, of having a little sense of um, uh, humor, <laughs> of being self-aware, of being confident but not arrogant, of knowing what you don't know and not being afraid to say, I don't know, but I will take care of it. I mean, for us, the worst thing to, to, you know, is to build a situation in which we're not trusted. You know, we say we'll do something and then we don't follow through. That's, I mean, that's sort of true of any job, I think. But particularly in our profession, we have, you know, such a high premium on trustworthiness um, that um, that is incredibly important for our ability to survive. So we have to understand all the different um, stakeholders that an organization deals with. We're the only people really at the end of the day inside an organization that has that broad view. Um, nobody else has that, except maybe the CEO. Mm -hmm. And even then, you know, we're probably best suited to really help guide organizations through that. Does that mean that we run everything? No. Does that mean that, you know, the marketing function isn't, you know, just as important in a different way? No. But, you know, our role has to really be one of being the guide for that web of relationships that an organization has to develop and cultivate in order to be successful. Mm -hmm.